Welcome back to Candy Adventures, you muggles. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And I want you to check out where we are because we're super excited because we've had a pretty bad couple of days. Check it out. Look at this. Wow. We have arrived at our first beachfront spot for our Baja trip. We've spent the last um, five hours. This is our second day in Baja. Our first day, we got stuck in the sand up to our axles, all the axles. <laughs> uh, even the motorcycle hauler in the front, the hitch hauler was all in the sand. And we just camped in the desert and uh, adjusted our strategy a little bit. We right, got our, right. our tires pumped back up. Yep. Got on the highway and then... We encountered uh, the police in Baja for the first time. Um, I'm not sure what happened exactly. I'm still a little fuzzy, you know, thinking back in my head, but here's some footage of it so that you can see what happened. And I'm not sure if what happened was legitimate or illegitimate. No, I'm sorry. No Spanish. No. Okay, uh, I need to speak in English a little bit. Okay. Okay, uh, do, you, uh, do you have uh, the. Uh, how do you say permiso uh, of the oh the, the motorcycle the in the front the, yeah the pickup yeah okay the, I have a so this is for the pickup I have the pickup and then uh, this one is for the motorcycle the the uh, this is the paper the of the motor motor yeah mm -hmm. okay the, the how do you say permiso uh, 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 and, and you uh, have the front moto Mm -hmm. Do you have the uh, paper? Permiso? Uh, uh, in Mexico, uh, uh, the the motors uh, go in the in the in the back of the vehicle. Okay. No, in front. No front. I I uh, um, there is paper uh, lines. Yep. Oh. The motor front, the pickup. Oh. Where, uh -huh. where yeah. do you get it? Where? Talking about, talking about the headlights? He's talking about you need permission to put the motorcycle up there. Yeah. In Mexico, no está permitido motos en front por the vision. Oh, for the, uh -huh. what's noche? Uh, no, for, no. What's night? No vision. He's Entonces, saying you can't see now uh -huh. in the day. In Mexico. I, I, existe un, un permiso. Wh how or, or where do we uh, get it? Ese, ese, uh, es, this is in, in gobierno del estado of Tijuana. In Tijuana? Uh -huh. o, o, o Mexicali, o Ensenada. Do you know how the, the paper? The no, because we came through Mexicali. Yeah, they didn't say. And they didn't Mexicali. say. No. Okay. They're saying that we can't drive in Mexico with the motorcycle on the front of the truck, that it has to be on the back unless we have special permission and have a piece of paper from. Tijuana or Mexicali saying that we have permission to put the motorcycle in the front and they're trying to show Chris that we have a hitch in the back so that we can move or switch the motorcycle to the back but we can't because the extension it won't reach because the camper overhangs and it's too much weight back there we would have to have a supported hitch that's made specifically for the weight of that motorcycle might be it on the trip if we have to go back to Ensenada because we can't afford uh, we can't afford the money to come back so that's gonna be a bummer if that uh, ends our trip in Mexico which we've been saving up six months for because we just don't have the money to drive all the way back to Ensenada and then turn around and come back because that's a lot of diesel yeah so I'm pretty sure I just paid my first bribe ever in my life haven't had any problems anywhere didn't have any problems at the border crossing crossing any of the states I even asked local law enforcement. Nobody could cite me a law of what it what it's breaking. Yeah. But the uh, Mexican local police officer did find uh, something that he pointed me to in a manual that something about something can't be more than two feet in front of your, in front vehicle, of your vehicle if it's a motor vehicle. But I, I don't know. So I don't know if I just paid a bribe or not. Uh, but I'm very worried that on the way back through, I'm going to pay that same bribe again tax again but he kept saying that we needed to go to a mechanic 
to fix the problem, basically putting the motorcycle on the back. And in broken Spanish, we tried to explain the motorcycle is too heavy to go on the back because it's, it's, it's not, long. It's, it's not long. possible. We have a extended hitch on the back because of the truck camper and that will fit um, the smaller weight stuff back there. You know, we only, we only have like a hundred pounds on the rear hitch because it's on a 18 inch extension. Yeah. You can get a super hitch. Which, from torque lift. <laughs> from torque lift, which will allow you to put a lot of weight on a long lever, which is what it would have to do to get underneath that camper and it's made for that. But to do that, the super hitch and extension, I think is like, I don't know, probably like $2,000 for all that. Yeah. Um, so it's just like not possible currently to put the motorcycle on the a, back. A roadside mechanic can't fix that. You need a lot of big heavy steel and, uh, you know, super hitch and a uh, double truss extension and all that. Yeah. So, so basically the deal was, he said, you can pay right now and then I'll call my friends and all the way down to Cabo and tell them that they shouldn't pull you over. We'll take your names. If we get it fixed if in Cabo. If we get it fixed in Cabo. But uh, if you're watching Torque Lift and would like to send us a super hitch, we would really love to review it for you because <laughs> I think we're the perfect candidates right now. <laughs> but today alone, I passed a couple other people with a motorcycle in the front, so I don't know if everybody's getting pulled or if it's just, just us. Just because, you know, two cute blondes in the front seat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, the other police officer said that our motorcycle was Bonito. Oh. Very pretty. You like my Bonito money too. <laughs> but. Our budget now just shrunk by fifty dollars, so fifty USD. Uh, staying in any of these nice resorts that would have had a, a hot shower is probably out of the question. Yeah. Um, so rain clouds still following us around, literally and figuratively. Harry stopped the coat quickly out of sight. So that's fun. Fun update. Yay! Uh, but anyway, we kept going. Five hours later, we made it to this beautiful beach. driving off-road but they limit how many people can be here which is kind of like our dream because we want to be away from people and uh, lo and behold we found a little cove with no people there's no one um, it's absolutely beautiful I've never been somewhere where there's cactuses um, touching the ocean <laughs> there's cactuses right here and up here and over here everywhere's <laughs> cactuses and then the oceans right here I've never in my life been somewhere where there's uh, this type of topography. Yes, and it is beautiful. We will do some more droning um, when it's maybe not impending rain, which seems to be following us all the way from Asheville, North Carolina through Baja. It's rained on us every day. We, we keep thinking, oh, it's gonna be so warm and dry when we get to New Mexico. Oh, it's gonna be war so warm and dry when we get to uh, California. Oh, it's gonna be so warm and dry when we get to Baja uh, Norte. Oh, it's Baja Sur is gonna be, you know, yep. rained every single day that it we've been It has rained here. or snowed, some sort of precipitation. So maybe if we just stay here long enough, the odds will be in our favor that it'll just move past. So we're gonna get this, our camp set up real quick before it rains and everything gets nasty. That's about as good of a campsite that exists on planet Earth. Now that Mona has had her dinner, it is time for our dinner. And some of these special edition Dos Equis here. How do you say his name? Steve Okoy? Steve Aoki? Steve Aoki, right? I've never heard of him. So we got some uh, special edition. He's a musician. I think it's Steve Aoki. And we have some special edition uh, New Mix, which is a... Um, tequila. <laughs> tequila drink, and it looks like a Mountain Dew, but I don't think it's associated with a Mountain Dew. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh boy. I was thinking about starting a cookbook. We could raise to get some more funds. And uh, pretty much what you do with this, you just make it hot. I like the 
this technique here. Why cut it before when you can cut it during? Cut it during. Save the cutting board. I, I'll wash as few things as humanly possible when I'm cooking. Sometimes you get a little shell in there, but that's okay. It's called ketchup seasoning, and it's like all the seasoning and spices that are supposed to be in ketchup, and I absolutely love it. Uh, and we've been using it this whole trip, and uh, it is my new favorite spice. I go through a new spice that I love about once every month or two, and this month it is this ketchup seasoning. stash and we've got a wide variety in here soy sauce ranch from Burger King chick-fil-a sauce like breakfast but a little more savory a little less sweet and the tortillas are really good I've never had tortillas that are thin before but they are delicious you gotta get in on this mmm that's hot food <laughs> that's true that's facts everything we make I call hot brown mm -hmm. the tortillas brown the beans are brown the hams brown once you mix the eggs with everything's brown I always say, mmm, hot brown, because everything we eat is hot brown. But. Or if it's served uh, not in a tortilla, served on a plate, a plate or a bowl, it's hot mush. Yeah, hot mush or hot brown. <laughs> but it's windy outside. It's a little bit chilly. And uh, we're going to keep eating this and catch you guys tomorrow. Leche, busta de melania par. If that isn't an Instagram thought worthy reveal of our beach morning, I don't know what is. <laughs> Why are you bringing up Instagram thoughts? I'm not bringing up Instagram thoughts. I'm just saying that's how they reveal a beach in the morning. But they're usually prancing around in their bikini. I wouldn't know. They just sometimes get suggested on social media, and mm -hmm. I don't know. And Anyway, this is a beautiful beach that has nothing to do with Instagram thoughts that I never get suggested where we tried to do a little fishing and caught nothing and it was super rough. So we went ahead and packed up our campsite and started heading south. Which was fine with me because we got to do another hour of off-roading, just throwing it in low range and just letting this truck crawl along. Super fun, um, very relaxing, just got to sip coffee. Until. Until what? Dun, dun. Are, you, are you foreshadowing? Dun, dun, dun. Does this have something to do with Instagram? No, no. My Instagram search history? Okay, no. good. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's shut this gate and get back down the road. I think this is kind of like, almost like BLM land in the States where you put a cattle gate up, but people are still allowed to go across it. So that's what it seems like. So hopefully we'll see. This is why you're not supposed to drive at night. Um, situations like these uh, uh, donkeys here which are in the road and don't seem to care that I am in the road also. It's pretty donkeys though. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right, I've taken a few moments to gather my thoughts and uh, unclench my hands from this steering wheel. Uh, I have preloaded these denim cutoffs with all of the fear and anxiety that were in my guts. Uh, so that could be bad. We just went over a speed bump that was unmarked and we unpainted. Were, we were looking for a road to cut off on and laying behind me on the road is my worst nightmare. Um, I'm going to go double check to make sure that it's not what I think it is, but I think this may be a trip ender. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but, uh, we're not good at catching stuff like this on camera. Even, but, even like talking to the camera right now is like, it's uncomfortable because this is not a good time. Like, but I'm going to go check what is laying on the pavement back behind us. Um, so I'll be right back. You guys wait here. You be a good girl. And I'm going to go see how much money is laying on the road behind us right now.
I'm really hoping it's just something that fell off that back rack, like it just wasn't strapped down or something broke, because what we're fearing is something just broke off the camper. Well, that's the worst possible outcome that could happen. So this is what was laying on the road behind us, which is a torque lift fast gun, which we just got sent and is in amazing shape for just bouncing down the pavement. Um, this thing is not what is to blame for what is happening right now. Uh, this is a really awesome product still. This is, this is the attachment point. That ripped off of our camper? Yep, this is a, this is a hole that we, is now we, in the- We have a hole in our camper right now? Are you serious? This is, uh, there's four of these that hold these in the bed of the truck and they go like this. And what has failed is the wood in our camper. I thought there was metal in here in the frame of this camper, but it's not. It just uh, ripped out. I don't know if that's, I don't know why that ripped out. We hit the speed bump a little, a little hard, but not, not anything like surprisingly hard, like that would blow your mind. Um, you know, we probably hit it at 10 or 15 miles an hour instead of five, but was that fast gun too tight or something? No, it wasn't because I trip because we just got these sent to us from Torque Lift. And so we put these on like as per the manual. I watched a video on it just to make sure. We set these to where they had plenty of slack in the system. These have a cushion, a spring loaded cushion on the inside to help take some of that jolt. But this is our rear driver side turnbuckle uh, attachment point uh, that has ripped out of the camper. So I don't know. I think it'll be okay to limp on it for a while with only three of these, but I don't even know if this is fixable. I just peeked my head up in here and I'll show you guys in just a second, but there's just a hole in the bottom of the camper. I don't know how you would fix this. This is a sheet of plywood and the way the camper's built, it's almost just in my cursory look of it, looks like you'd have to rip the whole camper apart to replace this. I don't know. Don't know if this is fixable, but this is a pretty rock bottom moment here on old Candy Adventures, but I'll show you guys. You can come look at it yourself. And uh, if any of you guys are camper people and know if this is fixable, please let us know. Please let us know. I don't think that's something that we can get even fixed in Mexico. Oh my God, I don't want to see this hole. So this, on a truck camper, you have two tie downs in the front and two in the rear. This should go like this. Oh my God, that hole is huge. And this whole piece of wood ripped out. And then this was laying on the highway. And you can see in here this hole. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. <gasps> it's this whole thing. Yeah, and it looks like this pulled down. I don't know how in the world you would fix that. It's a solid sheet of plywood. I don't know how you would possibly repair that without taking like the whole camper apart. So this might just be a old lucky three-legged dog for a while. And we're just going to have to go super slow over bumps um, because we only have three holding it down now. And now that puts extra pressure on the one on the other side. If we hit a bump and the back comes up, it only has one turnbuckle in the back holding it down. So in my head, that would double the pressure that's on that one to keep the back from bucking. So just going to have to go really slow and really look out for any more speed bumps or uh, big rocks or anything. A lot of twisting force like we take this off road. And uh, so that's a bummer. I don't know how to end this video um, other than this sucks, but uh, that's what you get when you go on an adventure. Sometimes it sucks and sometimes it's awesome. But. I mean, we can't get that fixed in Mexico, can we? No. I have one person I know that spends a lot of time in Mexico and uh, he told me that he drove a V10 Ford truck most of the length of Baja, Mexico because he didn't want to stop at any of the garages. So I guess if you don't know where to stop, you could just, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know in the States where you would get this fixed. So I don't know if we should head back towards the States in case this is not, you know, something that you should drive with for a long time. I mean, I don't know. all the places that we were going to go was off road. And if we can't off road with it like that. Yep. I'm not sure. Last night, the diesel heater broke in this thing, which you don't really need. it. It's not that cold, but, um, the diesel heater broke. And then now this just broke. Uh, and then we got right before this, we got our car searched again today um, for like 30 minutes and they went through everything. It was very annoying. Every single bag. That's like the 10th time we've been searched. I don't know if this is a good Lord saying maybe we shouldn't be in Mexico right now, but uh, we may have to head back towards the States and get this sorted out. 
Well, that was a big turn of events for our Baja trip. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to end this video here. We're going to have to figure out where to even stay tonight because the sun is going down. Um, and then whether or not we want to pursue going further into Mexico or go back. So. So as fun as this is, like and subscribe. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, um, you know, never let a catastrophe go to waste just like any good politician. You know, maybe if you want to check out some Candy Adventures merch. Because this trip just got <laughs> more expensive than my credit card can bear. Also, if you know anything about truck campers, I'm going to set up the Starlink tonight and try to figure out if this is fixable or how to fix it. I have no clue. Yeah, if anybody's ever fixed this before about how much did it cost and is it, is is it, it possible? possible? I don't know if it's possible. This is a... 20 year old camper i don't know if it's possible to fix this wooden like does the is it, it does the money worth it you know by the time you take this all apart is it even worth the value of the camper i have no idea but we'll see you guys next time hopefully doing something more fun and not dour <laughs>